Medicare and Medicaid are two essential but distinct health insurance systems in the United States. While these programs are run by different parts of our government and have separate legal structures, millions of people rely on both. Unfortunately, the lack of integration between them often causes challenges for these individuals. In this video, brought to you by the Medicare Rights Center, you will discover how Medicare and Medicaid can better work together to support more than 12 million people enrolled in both programs, as well as the millions more in Medicare savings programs. By the end, you'll have the knowledge you need to explore the case studies available on our website, medicarerights.org. These case studies follow our clients and counselors, demonstrating how simple changes in the collaboration between Medicare and Medicaid can significantly improve access to affordable health care. From these real-life experiences, we derive our policy recommendations, aiming to make these vital programs more accessible, user-friendly, and sustainable for everyone. Over the next 11 minutes, we will define some terms often used to talk about Medicare, Medicaid, and Medicare savings programs. We will learn how Medicare and Medicaid are different and how they can interact. We will also identify some of the common challenges faced by people enrolled in these programs. So, what's Medicare and what's Medicaid, and how are they different? Medicare and Medicaid are both government-provided health insurance programs, but they differ in eligibility criteria, coverage rules, and administrative processes. Medicare is a federal program that pays for medical care for people who are over the age of 65, receive social security disability payments, or have been diagnosed with end-stage renal disease. Most people pay a monthly premium for Medicare, and there are costs to access care, like deductibles, coinsurances, and co-pays. Because Medicare is a federal program, the rules, coverage, and benefits are the same across the country. Medicaid is a federal and state program that covers medical care for people who have limited income and assets. Most Medicaid programs do not have a premium, and the costs associated with accessing care are limited. Sometimes Medicaid can cover care that isn't covered by Medicare, like dental care and long-term supports and services. Because Medicaid is a federal and state program, some of the rules, structures, and coverage of Medicaid programs vary from state to state. The federal government sets broad guidelines and minimum standards for Medicaid, but states have significant flexibility. Medicare savings programs are federal Medicare programs for people with limited income and assets that are administered by state Medicaid offices. Medicare savings programs have federally defined benefits and basic eligibility rules. Medicare savings programs in every state provide financial assistance for Medicare out-of-pocket costs, but states can establish more generous income and asset limits. All Medicare savings programs cover Medicare premiums, and the program for individuals with the lowest incomes and assets also eliminates the deductibles, coinsurances, and copayments that most people with Medicare are responsible for. What do these differences mean? For one thing, eligibility rules are very different. Medicare's eligibility rules are based on statuses that do not frequently change. Most people who enroll in Medicare keep it for the rest of their life. On the other hand, Eligibility requirements for Medicaid and Medicare savings programs are based on factors, including a person's income and savings, which can fluctuate from year to year. Additionally, changes to the programs are made by different parts of government. Medicare changes can be the result of changes to federal law made by Congress and signed by the President, or the result of changes to rules that interpret and implement the law by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, called CMS. Changes to Medicaid policies can be the result of changes to federal law, to CMS rules, or the result of changes to state laws passed by state legislators or by rules issued by state Medicaid agencies. In practice, these differences are most felt by people covered by these insurances in three areas. First, in application, enrollment, and recertification. Second, in accessing care, and having claims paid. And third, in resolving issues when things go wrong. Let's break these down a bit. 
Medicare enrollment and eligibility is managed by the Social Security Administration. There are specific timeframes during which individuals can enroll in Medicare, and missing these opportunities can result in coverage gaps and enrollment penalties. When enrolling in Medicare, individuals can also opt for a private insurance plan to cover prescription drugs, known as Part D. Additionally, they can choose to enroll in a managed care plan, referred to as a Medicare Advantage plan, or purchase supplemental insurance to cover coinsurances, called Medigap policies. Those who do not enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan retain original Medicare. Navigating the Medicare enrollment process can be time-consuming and confusing. However, once enrolled, individuals will maintain their Medicare coverage as long as they continue to pay their premiums. Medicaid and Medicare Savings Program eligibility is managed by a state's Medicaid agency or another local office given this responsibility by state law. The name of the agency that handles these applications and the name of different Medicaid programs can vary from state to state. The applications can vary dramatically in form and complexity, and they can require people to submit documentation in specific formats, including originals or notarized copies. Some states require in-person interviews as part of the application process. Additionally, some states require or allow people with Medicaid to choose a private insurance company to provide their Medicaid benefit through a Medicaid managed care plan. Medicaid and Medicare savings programs require annual recertification to maintain enrollment in the benefit. Recertification procedures vary from essentially requiring reapplication with updated documentation to more streamlined processes. All people with Medicare and Medicaid and all people enrolled in a Medicare savings program are automatically enrolled in the Part D Low Income Subsidy, also called Extra Help, which reduces prescription drug costs. Extra Help is a federal program, so if a person is not automatically enrolled, they can apply through the Social Security Administration. During the COVID-19 public health emergency, Medicaid and Medicare Savings Program application and recertification rules were streamlined in all states. Instead of having to provide specific types of proof, people were able to swear to the truth of the answers in their applications, which is called self-attestation. People could also submit applications using modern technology instead of requiring pen and paper materials, and recertification was automatic. These changes reduced barriers to accessing and maintaining these crucial benefits, eased the burden on beneficiaries and Medicaid workers, and decreased the likelihood of improper denials. When someone has both Medicare and Medicaid, they are called dually eligible individuals, or sometimes duals for short. Both insurances are responsible for paying for their care, but because they have different rules and structures, this can lead to problems. Medicaid law requires Medicaid to be the payer of last resort. This means that Medicaid pays after all other health insurance has paid. When someone has only Medicare and Medicaid, Medicare pays first and Medicaid pays second, covering the deductibles, coinsurances, and copays that people with Medicare are otherwise responsible for. Because Medicare is a federal program, a person who has Medicare in one state has all the same rights and access to the same covered benefits as a person who has Medicare in another state. Federal law and federal agencies set the rules for who can enroll in Medicare and what kinds of care are covered. The services that Medicare can pay for are defined in federal law and are the same for all people with Medicare. People who choose to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan may also have coverage for supplemental benefits. These can vary from plan to plan. All Medicaid programs are required by federal law to cover certain services, but states can also add to or otherwise modify the Medicaid benefit package as long as they have federal approval. For this reason, a benefit that is included in one state may not be covered by another. Medicaid may cover items and services that Medicare excludes, such as dental services, or it may have different coverage rules for something that both programs can cover, like a wheelchair. For services that Medicare does not cover, Medicaid is the primary insurance and must pay first. When the coverage rules are different for certain services, Medicare will process the claim first, but if it is denied, Medicaid should pay the full amount. 
Medicare rules generally do not allow for a claim to be processed until after the service is provided, but many Medicaid programs require approval before getting the service. Additional authorization may be required by a Medicare Advantage plan or Medicaid Managed Care plan. Additionally, for Medicare or Medicaid to cover a service, the provider must be enrolled with or accept the insurance. If the patient is in a Medicare Advantage plan or a Medicaid Managed Care plan, the provider must also be part of that private plan's network. Unfortunately, even when the same company offers both a Medicare Advantage plan and a Medicaid Managed Care plan, or when the Medicare Advantage plan is marketed specifically to people with Medicaid, there is a significant likelihood that the networks are not identical. Both Medicare and Medicaid have procedures for correcting improper or incorrect coverage decisions. As we have just learned, these are distinct programs, and understanding how to resolve issues can be extremely difficult and technical. Depending on the problem, a duly eligible person may need to file an appeal, seek an exception, request a fair hearing, ask for equitable relief, or submit a grievance to the Social Security Administration, Medicare Administrative Contractors, their Medicare Advantage Plan, their Medicaid Managed Care Plan, the local Medicaid office, their Part D plan, or another agency. Unraveling problems becomes even more complicated when the staff working in each program lack knowledge about the other programs or how their own program operates differently for dual eligible individuals. Thank you for learning about Medicare, Medicaid, and Medicare savings program terms and concepts with us. This video provides a solid foundation to explore our case studies where you can learn more about the challenges people with Medicare and Medicaid face in enrolling, using, and maintaining their coverage. With the knowledge you've gained today, you can share our recommendations for policymakers outlined in each case study to improve these processes and procedures for the millions of people who rely on these essential programs.